Welcome to another episode of Revival Makers. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've been in one of our recent services or have tuned into the telecast before, you know that our anthem verse for this year is Jeremiah 32 and 17, which declares, O sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and earth by your strong hand and powerful arm. Nothing is too hard for you. I felt led by the Holy Ghost to declare that in every church, every time I'm with a group of people, it's to declare there's nothing too hard for God. And so until he tells me otherwise, you're going to hear me quoting Jeremiah and saying those words, nothing is too hard for God. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're praying for. But I want to say back to you, nothing is too hard for God. At the end of the telecast, I'm going to pray with you and I'm going to believe with you for your miracle. And I believe that you're going to write to me very soon and tell me that what seemed difficult, God made possible. I want you to join me in a recent service that we had. And I trust that this word is going to be a blessing to you. There was a man at Bethesda that had been there 38 years waiting Hoping. Or don't. 38 years waiting for the miracle to take place. 38 years watching everyone else get healed. Everyone else get blessed. Everyone else get theirs. Waiting. Wondering, when is it my turn? The only thing about that story... Thank you for waiting. <laughs> the only thing about that story that I've wondered about is that when Jesus found the man waiting, he found him on a pillow. Why did the man get comfortable? Why did he get comfortable when everyone else was getting healed? Why was he comfortable in his condition, comfortable in his sickness? While everyone else is getting a miracle, everyone else is getting a blessing. I guess you need the context for what I'm talking about. Bethesda was the house of healing. At that time in history, it was known that when the angel would come and touch the water, whoever would step into the water first would be healed of whatever was wrong with them. And so multitudes would gather around the pool waiting, saying, it's my season. And they would dip and they would be instantly healed. But the Bible says that there was a man that had waited 38 years. That's a long time, y'all. That's a long time. 38 years watching everyone else get theirs. And one day while they were waiting on the angel, the God that the angels worship walked in robed in flesh. For you see, Bethesda was not a house of hope. It was a house of expectancy. No one went to Bethesda hoping they would get healed. They came expecting to get healed. There is a difference. Hope makes you wake up and cross your fingers and say, I hope it happens. Expectancy will make you like a kid on Christmas where you wake up and you just know that there's going to be something under that tree. Bethesda was the house of expectancy for they knew that at any moment they could be healed. And Jesus was walking by in Jerusalem when expectancy pulled him into the room. That's, see, that's what your faith does. When you operate in faith, you pull Jesus into your situation. You're sick, you're broke, you're bound. You're downtrodden, depressed, anxious. Just exhibit faith and faith will bring Jesus into that situation. And when Jesus entered the room, he was drawn to the man that had waited 38 years. And he asked him the simplest of questions. Do you want to be healed? Could you imagine that? I mean, of course, this is all he wanted. Could you imagine going to the doctor and the doctor coming out? You want to be well? well? Yeah, doc, that's why. It's like, you know, obviously you can tell I don't go to the gym. But that'd be like Nate showing up to the gym and someone saying, do you want to be fit? Well, yeah, kind of. That's why I'm here. Jesus asked him the easiest, most simple question. Do you want to be healed? 
And he didn't say yes or no. He said, well, I don't have a man. All the single ladies said amen. I don't have a man to help me. It's in there. He said, I don't have a man to help me. And the angel comes and he moves the waters, stirs the water, and someone always jumps in front of me and nobody helps me, nobody rolls me, no one pushes me. Imagine, he is in the presence of God talking about men. Yet we do it all the time. We are in the presence of the Holy One of Israel right now. But we'll have excuses. Well, but you don't know where I come from. You don't know, my dad wasn't in the picture, and my mother was this, and my mom did, and my child. And, and we have all these excuses for why we are the way we are. Yet in the presence of God, not one of those reasons matter. Notice in the scripture, when you get home, I'm going quick because of the time, everyone. Forgive me for, for rushing through this. But notice when you get home and you read the story, he gave all these complaints to God and not one complaint did the Lord address. Because he wasn't there for his complaints, he was there for his wholeness. He was there for a miracle. And so the Lord steps over these things and I want to know if you want to be healed. And then the word of the Lord was, pick up thy bed and walk. That th he was, ladies and gentlemen, if it was me, just think about it for a minute. If you're telling me that my miracle is on the other side of this threshold right here, y'all, I'm not going to hang out back here. Partially because I'll trip over the vent. I'm not going to hang out over here. If you're telling me my miracle is there, I'm going to be right here. Just in case it comes while I'm sleeping, I'm going to go to bed like this. I'm not, I'm not going to let you steal mine. I just let my finger hang there just, just, to, just so that it'll touch the water and I'll get my blessing. If you really wanted it, you'd position yourself for the miracle. But he got comfortable. He bought a bed, he bought a pillow, and he was in the house of miracles, but far away from his own miracle. In the house of change, but experiencing no change, because he was comfortable in his condition. I want the Lord to know that I'm in a house with about a thousand people today. We're not comfortable the way we were. We're not comfortable the way things have been. We're, we're, we're getting positioned for change. We're getting positioned for the miracle. We're, we know that we're at the precipice. We're at the brink and I want you to know I stand ready to receive everything that the Father has so you gotta be careful there was a man about 12 minutes ago who came spinning down that front aisle and half of you didn't know whether to call 911 or what just happened in this house you don't know what he needs from God. You don't know what he's believing God for. Sometimes God will call you to do something crazy, something radical, something that doesn't make sense to anyone else. And that's okay. You be you, boo. You will go ahead and be comfortable and lay on your mat. But I'm not comfortable in my condition. I'm ready for change. I'm ready for breakthrough. I'm ready to see my children serving God. I'm ready to see my finances prosper. I'm ready to see health in my body change in my community I can't stay still I can't stay silent I can't be comfortable any this is the day of miracles and I'll tell you this that man after 38 years he should have sensed it I was born and raised in Chicago Hence the suit. It's called the Capone Special. You go to any store, they'd be like, what color you want your stripe? I'm like, I'll do gray this time. So I leave Chicago. I move to Virginia. And they take me to a farm. I get on my kid. I got five teenagers at home. 19, 18, 17, 16, 14. There's a reason I'm here alone today. My kids, you know, they buy all these, what do you call the shoes? I don't call them shoes anymore now, Brother Mike. They call them 
not even sneakers. What do they call them? Like kicks, kicks, Crocs, kicks. I don't know. The, the kicks. I don't know. Maybe that's the wrong word. I don't know. My kids also told me stuff. So I don't know if maybe that went out with the. And I like just learned that. And they're like, yeah, dad, you're 10, late, 10 years late on that one too. My kids get all these fancy shoes, right? I, I don't know. I think they're gym shoes. And they walk around the house. Like penguins. I'm like, what are you doing? They're like, we don't want to crease our shoes. I'm like. Well, you should have seen me when they took me to the farm in my loafers. I don't have a lot of kicks, but I got a lot of loafers. And I was walking in the farm like this. Not because they didn't want to crease my shoes, but because the mud was getting on my leather. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Getting on the alligator skin there. And so I'm walking like this. I don't know how to act at a farm. I just learned how to say you all really fast. You know, y'all. And so we're on the farm walking. And that old farmer starts sniffing. <laughs> And I get self-conscious. I'm like, is it me? And then he said, it's going to rain. Ladies and gentlemen, there's not a cloud in the sky. It's about as blue as you painted the sky when you were in preschool with your crayons. I said, What'd you say? He said, it's going to rain. I said, how do you know? He said, I smell it. My man was so in tune with his atmosphere that he could smell it before you could see it. And as God is my witness, two hours later, it began to rain. Now, I came from the hills of East Tennessee to give a prophetic word to new season. You ready? You ready? It's going to rain, y'all. It's going to rain, y'all. It's going to rain healing. It's going to rain blessing. It's going to rain money. It's going to rain restoration. Hallelujah. I come to tell someone today that the blessing of the Lord is about to rain on this house. The glory of the Lord. You say, how do you know? I've been in this my whole life and I can smell it in this room. I can feel it in this room. The glory of God is about to show up, change you, heal you, bless you. And if that's your word, I praise him right now. I praise Him right now, like it's already done, like your body's already healed, like your money's already blessed, like your family's transformed, like your children have come home, like your marriage has been restored. Praise ye the Lord in the sanctuary. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Stand with me if you will, because I'm done. I got to go. I just came to hang out with Pastor Sam. Got a table for two. And then he wasn't there. But I'm not bitter. I'm not still talking about it three services later. I did what any rational person would do. I ate his food and mine too. Hallelujah. I've been through three services. I felt the glory of God in the first one. I felt the blessing of the Lord in the second one. But I feel something different in the third one. And maybe it's, see, sometimes the Lord will let me live out what I am to speak so that I understand it. I have been waiting for three services to feel what I felt in the, in the third one. But I got here... And the wait was over. And I know now why God, I wasn't supposed to preach today. I was coming to hang out. I was going to take him to my favorite hibachi grill. I'm not going to tell you which one. Tokyo. I was going to take him to my favorite hibachi grill. Where they put the bacon in the fried rice. Glory to God. Ah, tabashi. Oh. Where's my catcher? Ooh. They put bacon 
in the fried rice, y'all. Mm, uh, oh. You sprinkle a little teriyaki on top of it and dip it in the yum yum sauce. <laughs> We don't have time for all that right now. But I'm telling you, it's real good. So good I feel about talking about it right now. Okay, stop. Stop. I gotta stop. I was just gonna come hang out and get a little fried rice with bacon with the teriyaki and the yum yum sauce on the top of it. Just gonna hang out. And then Pastor Sam said, I need you to preach on Sunday. I said, I don't need to preach. I'm about to preach two weeks in Texas. I just wanna come hang out. He said, I need you to preach. And I came and I said, Lord, what do you want me to preach? And the Lord said, wait, I'll tell you later. And so I waited all through yesterday. I waited all this morning and I got to the house today. Not really knowing why the Lord brought me here, but now I understand why. He wanted me to tell new season that there is a new sound coming out of new season. And with that new sound, there are new miracles. There is new blessing. The word of the Lord to you is that there is a new thing that he, the Lord, is about to do. He's about to do. And there's not a devil in hell that can cancel it. There's not a human that can block it. You ought to get ready for the new thing. The new thing. Oh, the new thing that God's about to do. I'm here to tell you it's a new thing. It's a new thing. It's a new door. It's a new one. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Yeah, yeah. Stay on your feet, because I'm done. I think I'm done. I'm going to show you how he's about to do it for you. Ooh. I know some of you are a little nervous. I thrive in this. This makes me happier than any, not breaking speakers, but I like the move of God. I love it. I live for it. Remember those five kids I told you that I got? And then I look at all these 52 grandkids that the Rodriguez have over here. That's the way they all became the Rodriguez bunch. Got these five kids at home. And not one of them can get a job. I mean, like everyone's hiring. You make six figures being a dishwasher these days, you know? Not demeaning anyone's job. But they come home, they're like, Dad, I play volleyball. The other one, I play soccer. Like, I get my schedule. So one day, I'm just, you know, chilling, chilling. And I went and got me a little cherry snow cone because I like them. So I go to Hawaii and I just get me a little cherry snow cone. And there's a for sale sign. I said, Are you, you you're selling snow cones? He's like, Actually, I'm selling the whole business. He said, my kids have graduated college. He said, I bought this so that they'd have a job. I'm like, oh, you're my, you're my inspiration. You're my hero. I said, so you're selling it? He said, yeah. He said, do you have kids? I'm like, oh, do I have kids? Man, I got like a whole park district in my house. So I bought it. And I came home, called the family meeting. I'm like, hey, y'all, I bought Hawaiian ice. And they said, Why? I said, because y'all are going to work. And they're like, what are the hours? I'm like, whatever I say. How much does it pay? I'm like, whatever I decide. If you want to get back in the house, you're going to go work. So I bought Hawaiian ice. Woo. It's about to, listen, it's been good. It's about to get gooder in this house. Get ready. The, own, the previous owner, I got to get, I'm making sure Pastor Sam hasn't texted me. Oh, he did. Okay. Amen. Okay. Hey, this might be the last time I'm here, but it's great to know you. I'll see you in heaven, everyone. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Pastor gave me permission. La Patora gave me permission. So. He said, I got to show you how to work the machine so you can teach your kids. I said, yeah, please do that. He said, all right, play the video so that they can see. He said, you put it under, stop it right there. 
there's a, there's a pedal you got to push, okay? And you push the pedal, and the ice starts coming out. Can you rewind it and start it over again? All right, go. Stop. Four seconds, the cup is full. So he takes the cup, and he goes, it looks full, doesn't it? I said, yeah, that was quick. He goes, it's not full. It's not full. I'm like, what kind of mountain magic are you playing over here in Tennessee right now? He said, when it gets to this point, play the video again. He goes, then you got to press it down. Keep it going. And you got to shake it up. And when he said that, that little Pentecostal that lives in me said... What's your name? Ashley. Sister Ashley, I got quickened. Hallelujah. He said, you got to press it down, shake it up, and I got quickened. I said, and what do you do then? He said, you do it again. I said, Shh. I said, what exactly? And I kind of already knew the answer, Sister Ashley, but I was asking for my own, you know, I said, why exactly are we pressing it down and shaking it up? He said, because you have to make room for more. So at that point, I went straight Pentecostal helicopter. And then I asked him, I said, when do you know to stop pressing and shaking? He said, when the ice starts overflowing over the cup. I said, I'll be right back. I went to the parking lot and ran in the parking lot. I said, are you religious? He said, not particularly. I said, well, you got to understand. That's what the Bible says is how God's going to bless me. It's going to be pressed out. Shake it up and running over. And I'm here to tell you that the Father stepped on the pedal today and your blessing is about to overflow get ready my god i feel like td jakes in 1997 get ready get ready get ready get ready get 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 ready get ready for your cup to be so full after the pressing and the shaking the next thing in line is the overflow and i decree to new season your season of overflow has arrived in the name of jesus All right, we got to go. If you don't know the Lord, if you need a miracle, when I count to three, if your season of wait is over and you're going to pick up that bed and get what belongs to you, then when I count to three, I want you to raise that hand in the air and I'm going to speak the blessing of the Lord and that word is going to flow from here all over this sanctuary if your children aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. If your marriage is funny, if your marriage, if your money is funny, when I count to three, you put that hand in the air because the blessing of the Lord is about to come upon you. Get ready. One, two, two and a half, three. Come on, where are those hands? I'm going to pray the prayer of faith and when I shout the word now I want you to give God a shout of praise because on the other side of that shout is your healing your breakthrough and your deliverance are you ready upon the authority of the word of God by the power that's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I take authority over sin sickness and disease and in the name of Jesus be healed be delivered and be set free right now. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. 
Maybe you've never been quickened before, but if you feel it, just say, I never will be the same again. Amen and amen. I just love being in the house of God. You know, when I go back and I watch the videos of the services we've just been in, I get a second touch, a double blessing, because I can remember being in that, in that pulpit, on that platform, in that altar, and feeling the presence of God. And as I watch it, I can just feel it come over me all over again. I trust you felt it in your home or wherever you're watching today. I want to take a moment to pray with you. I am believing that the God of miracles, the master of miracles, is going to give you the thing that you're desiring, the thing that you're seeking of, seeking for, and by him doing that miracle for you or answering that prayer, you're going to be able to declare with us that nothing is too hard for God. Father, I thank you for every viewer. I thank you for everyone that's tuned in today. You know their need better than I do. And I thank you that you are a healer, you are a provider, and you are a way maker. Now, upon the authority of Jeremiah 32 and 17, and through the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we take authority over sin, sickness, and disease. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I speak healing, I speak health, wealth, and the blessing of the Lord for everyone that's tuned in today in Jesus' mighty name name, and I hope you're already saying amen wherever you're watching. I want to ask you for a favor. I want to ask you to visit the website today or call the number that's on your screen. Become a partner with our ministry. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us pray with you. There's always prayer counselors standing by if you need someone to pray with you. Thank you for your continued support of our ministry as we take the gospel of Jesus Christ from Johnson City, Tennessee to the ends of the earth. God bless you, and I'll see you again next week. the sound of the abundance of rain God's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh like the days of old revival has come again join evangelist Tony Suarez in El Paso Texas and McAllen Texas for a mighty revival revival is not coming revival is here revival on the border with evangelist Tony Suarez will be in El Paso, Texas, March 21st through the 23rd, and then in McAllen, Texas, March 27th through the 29th. Service begins at 7 p.m. nightly. For more information, visit TonySuarez.com.